Welcome to our first thought for the day for this new week, Monday the 27th of July. My name is Pam Cribbin and today we're looking at Psalm 112. On Saturday, Suzanne told us that Psalm 111 was an acrostic psalm, with each verse beginning with the successive letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Psalm 112 is the continuation of Psalm 111 with the second half of the alphabet. Whereas Saturday's psalm encouraged us to praise the Lord for all his amazing works, today's deals with how we, as God's people, are to live our lives. So I'll read the psalm in two sections. Verses 1 to 5. Praise the Lord. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commands. Their children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in their house, and their righteousness endures for ever. Even in darkness light dawns for the upright, for those who are generous, sorry, gracious and compassionate and righteous. Good will come to those who are generous and lend freely, who conduct their affairs with justice. So this psalm again begins with praise to God. The, the phrase praise the Lord in the original Hebrew is hallelujah. Did you know that you knew a word of Hebrew? It then continues with a list of some of the blessings for those who fear the Lord and find great delight in his commands. So a good question to ask might be, what are God's commands that we're supposed to find great delight in? Jesus was asked in Matthew 22, what was the greatest commandment? He replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul and strength. And the second most important was, Love your neighbour as yourself. These two commands, Jesus said, sum up all the other commandments. So according to this psalm, loving God and loving others is the best way to experience God's blessing. The first blessing that's mentioned is that your children will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. We all want good things and a good future for our children. One of the things I've worried about most during the pandemic is what will the consequences be for the next generations, particularly economic consequences? Will they have jobs? Will they have all they need to live well? Will they have a future with hope? Here is a reassurance that God is watching over our children's future. They will be mighty in the land. The psalm also mentions homes full of wealth and riches. In our time, the wealth and riches that God's promises are not always material, although for some they may be but they're listed in Ephesians chapter 1 as things like being adopted as God's children, being forgiven, being chosen. What amazing blessings. Verse 4 has a wonderful promise. Even in darkness, light dawns for the upright, for those who are gracious and compassionate and righteous. There's no darkness that's too dark for God's light to dawn. Let's trust God today that he can bring his light into our dark situations. In verse 5 we read, good will come to those who are generous and lend freely. For me, this is the opposite of how I sometimes tend to react when there's an opportunity to be generous. Supposing I need that money or that bag of flour or whatever it may be, perhaps I'd better hold on to it just in case. But God's kingdom works the opposite way. He is generous to all, but perhaps especially to those who are generous themselves. Let's read the second half of the psalm. Surely the righteous will never be shaken. They will be remembered forever. They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their hearts are secure. They will have no fear. In the end, they will look in triumph on their foes. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Their horn will be lifted high in honour. The wicked will see and be vexed. They will gnash their teeth and waste away. The longings of the wicked will come to nothing. What about the statement in verse 6, Surely the righteous will never be shaken? I don't know about you, but I tend to, be, to feel shaken quite often. However, although we might feel shaken, we know that our roots are secure, and ultimately nothing can shake us or remove us from God's love. Verse 7 talks about bad news. I had a conversation recently with someone about whether it was a good idea or not to listen to the news as it can very easily make us feel shaken and fearful. This psalm says followers of God will have no fear of bad news. How can that be? I think it's important to note that it doesn't say we won't ever receive bad news. We all know that's not true. 
but it does say we don't need to live in fear of bad news. Fear is crippling and can easily stop us living as this psalm encourages to live, loving God, loving others and being generous. So as the news continues to be difficult, let's remind ourselves that we don't need to live in fear of it, but our hearts can be steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And as the next verse reminds us, in the end we will look in triumph on our foes. So this psalm gets to the heart of what it means to live the sort of life God intended us to live. Loving God, loving our neighbour and demonstrating that by being generous. Then we can experience God's blessing, freedom from fear and light in the darkness. During this time when there's a lot of negativity, perhaps life seems like a desert that we can't see the end of. We feel surrounded by bad news and fear. These two psalms are like an oasis in the desert, reassuring us that God does still have all things in his control and he blesses us so that we can bless others. What reminder or assurance from today's psalm do we need to hear? And is there anything that someone else needs to know that we can pass on to them? Even if we may not always be able to be generous financially, we can still be generous with passing on God's promises and hope to people we meet who need to hear.